This conference will now be recorded. Okay, so what we have here is our meetup. is a, the unusual meetup, if you want to look at it that way. Um, our meetup is um, our our meetup is for tonight is or is is basically about you know cut the BS. This is <laughs> this is a cut the BS. You know we're trying to get people hired. We're trying to get you employed. I'm telling you. DevSecOps, I'm telling you Linux, I'm telling you cloud administration, what's going on, um, what's going on, Joe, how you doing, welcome, and I'm, I'm not sure who you have with you, but we're going to get to it, no, no worries, uh, Joe is, is coming in from the blockchain, NFT perspective, so forth and so on, um, but nevertheless, we're here to talk about, one, work, <laughs> two, uh getting not just to the bag but getting making sure you're uh employed and also what 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 jobs are out there so i i'm gonna let brett leave and then joe will hop right into you um so if you could tell us about your company brett uh 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 and what you do and what you're and actually what you're looking for and anything else that you would like to share tonight yeah, thank you, Tamika. Um, good afternoon, everybody. Um, good evening. Um, we're in Hawaii, so just just past lunch. So I was I almost said good morning, but it's it's no longer morning anymore. Um, I'm I'm Brett Kimura, so I, I'm I'm the president of a company called Revacom. Um, we actually headquartered here in Hawaii. We we're actually I joke all the time we're a 32 year old startup, right? Um, so we kind of you know plotted along the the first I would say 30 years of of the company's history. Um, riding kind of the, the the trends with you know the dot-com boom and bust um you know kind of this digital transform transformation wave um primarily we we just worked here in hawaii for i would say the first 26 27 years of, of the company's history um what we found though is you know uh hawaii has a lot of talented people but it's a really small market right um, and, and for a company that has aspirations of growth uh, for, for many different reasons and kind of the purpose and mission that we're trying to accomplish, doing work in Hawaii uh, wasn't enough, right? Um, and so, you know, we, we kind of attached ourselves to like the DOD world. Um, we attached ourselves to now the FedCiv world. And we're really kind of getting out there to prove that, you know, not, not just in Hawaii, but communities like Hawaii, I think, I think underserved communities and such, um, have really, really great people that can do great things and compete with you know the, the best in the world um so you know that that's kind of like you know our company mission vision kind of in a, in a nutshell here um you know a little bit about me and, and why this is important um you know I, I started off as Revacom as an unpaid intern uh, my LinkedIn thing just I just I hit my 15 year anniversary which is which is pretty pretty crazy um I'm I'm 37 years old so I started while I was in college um and you know kind of wore every single hat um in the company where we were six i think when i started um up to about two years ago we we're mid-20s and now we're at 87 i think is the official count looking to get we're probably going to grow to about 140 here in the next six months uh, so so tremendous growth um a lot of it has to deal with kind of this this devops space right um DevOps, uh, automation security automation um so I'll talk a little bit about that later, but um, as we kind of, you know, I, I would say about four or five years ago, um, we were in a few bit like business development groups, right? Like business peers that talk about how we operate business, like why we're doing it, you know, why why is it important that we do what we do? And and one of the members, you know, uh, life changing day for me asked like, hey, you know, why why do you want Revocom to grow to this size? Like, what what's your purpose, right? Um, and and like I knew instantly, right? Like people ask you what your purpose is, and I, I don't, I don't know if you, you know, I don't know if you can answer that question today. But um, as soon as I became a father, I knew what my purpose was, right? The first was to just make sure my son was was a good human being and contributed to society. Um, but second was, you know, I, I had an experience when I was young where I was told I couldn't be something or I couldn't do something just because kids that grow up the way that you're growing up don't have those types of opportunities. And and what a crappy thing to to tell you know a 12 year old kid at, at that point in time and and so when I thought about my son I thought about my role in the company um, I just and, and my role in the community really I just want to make sure that no kid that grew up the way that I did probably like the ways that you all did 
were ever told that before, right? So it became really important for us to to prove that Hawaii communities like Hawaii could could produce the best talent and, and compete, right? And and do great work and that that makes a difference. Um, so you know, fast forward to today, we we kind of were marching, you know, along those those lines on those orders, um, really trying to bring people up and and train them up. You know, DevSecOps is such a, a new emerging field. We come from a a software development background, so we're doing it for ourselves, but we never provided it as a service for for others, right? So we did all the cloud infrastructure to get our apps out. We did, you know, the DevOps to get our apps out, but never provided as a service for somebody else. Um, you know, and so. Um, Another, you know, like again, a lot of people say like, hey, you know, you do things the right way, you're so successful, like you must be a great manager, um, like you must be really smart. Like, no, I, I'm just really, really lucky, kind of right place at the right time um, with, with the right people. And so, you know, I, I owe a lot to, to those people and to taking a chance on us. Um, but, you know, essentially I was, we were asked as, as like a little pilot project to figure out DevOps. And like, hey, can you can you help us for this small project to DevOps? I'm like, yeah, you know, we, we do that, but we never we never ever provided as a service before. Like nobody, no customer has inherent value in DevOps. It it's DevOps is provided to a team that's developing an application that derives value, you know, to an end user. So you have to be able to tell that story and you have to translate it from you know day one to an end user and that time to value typically can be a little long and, and a little confusing, especially for executives that are making the decision, right? Um, but but we did it, you know. We we um, started doing DevOps uh, for the Air Force. Um, we became a, a pretty large contributor to an organization some of you might know called Platform One, that be became kind of the standard for open source DevOps across the Air Force. Uh, we have about 27 people contributing to that ecosystem. Uh, by far, I think one of the largest that that contribute. Um, and we've we've learned so much, right? Um, We've done a lot, but in the process, we've learned a lot. We've learned about cybersecurity automation, um, you know, how to how to create like declarative baselines to to deploy um, apps and tools and such that, that make it easier and more manageable and scalable in the long term. And so, you know, with all this knowledge, uh, Center for Medicare and Medicaid Services actually asked us to do um, something for them too, right? And and, that, and we're calling that the Bat Cave Initiative. I'm kind of wearing wearing some of the swag that. That we're, we're putting out um but um you know so it's, it's turned into this big thing and it's it's actually in alignment with the presidential executive orders to like uh add cybersecurity into the, the delivery stack right so we're talking about like software bill of materials um and how we automate that right how we automate security how we ensure that people are following best practices um so this this thing that we're calling the bat cave um is really becoming the pilot for how DevSecOps and how software is delivered in, in the in the FedSiv space, much like how Platform One became the model for how it's delivered in the DoD. Um, so that, that's kind of you know where we're at today, and you know all, all the all the metrics, all the reports, right? Like the Gartner reports and stuff say that this is an industry that's going to grow 20 fold in the next four years. Um, we're seeing that, right? So we've we've you know brought a lot a lot of younger people in and and kind of you know trained them up and gave them the tool. But we we see a, a gap, I guess, between you know these younger folks and some of our really experienced and, and everywhere in between, just because unless you're doing it in one of these these ecosystems that we're doing it in, you know, uh, and Tamika knows she's in some of those too, like you're not not really getting it anywhere else, right? You might be doing bits and pieces of it, but you know, to automate the cybersecurity stack and to um, follow like software development best practices to provide like a true PaaS solution. So like we're doing this all as like a platform as a service, right? So having multi-tenant environments that you're actually building and deploying and scanning and, and doing all those things on, um, you know, it, it just hasn't been done in a lot of places. Um, so And I, I want to add to that too, Brett, because in, in the group, I tell you all, all the time, uh, about DevSecOps when we're talking about end-to-end -end testing. We talk about quantum computing. We talk about blockchain. We talk about how do you secure everything, AI, uh, machine learning. Uh, DevSecOps is going to be just, it, you just fall into the middle of everything. Now, Joe, I know you're looking at, at me over there like, I don't know, you know, I'm on a different path. But again, 
we, we DevSecOps still fits into your model at some point in there when we're talking about deploying applications or we're going to secure the blockchain and you start talking about auditing and compliance and uh, using SAST or DAST or decentralized apps. Uh, that that whole nine, we're we're you know it's still a part of that. So when I when I talk to you all about DevSecOps and applications and monitoring and observability and everything, I'm talking from a holistic perspective or something that gives you the ability to be in the industry for the next ten years. Like we're not talking about oh you know you're gonna have the same skills for the next 10 years but it gives you uh, a foundational knowledge to be in the industry for the next 10 years and move around um i put in the comments about platform one it's it's over 200 billion that's really low from what it really is i just didn't want to put the big number out there but platform one is a big one if anyone knows about nick shalon and then the situation that he went through he left he was like look if y'all want to have people, if you want to get security end to end and you want to move fast, you can't keep hiring the same people to do the work that knows nothing about what DevSecOps is, cloud security, AI, machine learning. We can't take people uh, who's who's been, you know, in the field shooting guns and then put them at the head of a of a of a of a multi stack and then move them. I get it. I understand. That's what you you want to have context for that. But in order to move quicker, we got to have people in place to understand what the issue is, what the problem is, and understand when someone is presenting a problem to them. You don't have to explain it to them to the point where they're like, no, we can't do that because that's going to eliminate somebody's job. It's not going to eliminate your job. It's just going to refocus your skill sets. And so I, I, I want to make sure we have that understanding of what we're what we're talking about here and where we're going. And I'm sorry, Brett, I had to get on my hype, my hype thing right there because I want, want to make sure I drill that home because it, 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 it irks me, gets under my skin. I just want to make sure we, we, we're drilling that home. Yeah. No, th thank you, Tamika, like spot on, right? Everything you said like resonates with me and and 100% like I believe in, um, you know, DevSecOps is, is foundational to how we're going to deliver anything in, in, the, in the digital world here um, over the next 10 to 15 years. And, and I, I don't see that changing anytime soon, right? Um, and, and, you know, we talk a lot about security, we talk a lot about automation, right? But but also it, enable, it enables portability, right? And a lot of people get confused with, with agile and portability and DevSecOps, or they're actually three separate practices, but you know, DevOps, DevOps or DevSecOps to me is, is foundational to to being portable, to being agile, right? Because you sh you take out a lot of the the manual processes that allows you to move fast and move quickly and learn quickly um, by by automating, right? And by automating a lot of activities. So, um, you know, hopefully, hopefully, like everybody gets that. You know, I think you know, from us, we have. We're experiencing tremendous growth. You know, we're, we're pretty open. We work with a lot of different companies and partners to to deliver these services, um, and and we're looking for like DevOps engineers from top to bottom, right? From from junior level all the way to leadership level type roles. Um, we have we have all of them available. Um, if you're wondering like, hey, like what makes me qualified for for a DevOps engineer? You know, there's there's two different pathways that we've been bringing a lot of people to kind of the DevOps space. Um, one is if you're like a Linux admin, right? You understand VM virtualization you know linux administration um containers that kind of stuff like that's one pathway for you to get in it if you haven't done it before the other is from a software standpoint i actually find some of our best engineers um get into it from from becoming a software engineer first right because ultimately you do these things to streamline the software delivery process right so understanding software development understanding tech stacks you know testing in different tech, tech, stack, tech stacks and such, just make make it uh, easier to to get into and adopt. Um, so yeah, you know, that that's that's kind of my, my spiel. Um, you know, we're Center for Medicare and Medicaid Services, which is one of the ones that we're actually kind of recruiting for, um, is probably one of the largest agencies in, or I mean, one of the largest centers uh, in, in, the, in the nation, right? They actually serve 134 million people um, every day almost. Um, and they're part of the of the larger health and human services, which basically serves everybody, every single person in the United States. So, you know, the impact that we have the ability to 
um, effect is is tremendous, right? And and it's really good, you know, for our nation, for our people, uh, for ourselves in the future that that we do this and we get it right. Um, so yeah, I, I think that's kind of my my spiel. Um, open to answering any questions. You know, I'm I'm really transparent um, and 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 straightforward. So anything you guys have, I'm glad, glad to answer. Even if it's about me personally, about Revacom, about the job, or just generally what I see in the space. Um, so you you came to me and you said you had a position open so let's talk about that position that was open and what you're looking for and i know it was something immediate so i don't know if it's, that's still the case but you know give your spill on that position that you had open if it's still open yeah it, it is um we have essentially about four positions open or four different levels of positions open in, in kind of this related field um, so one is is really kind of like a, a DevOps lead, like SME slash architect for for the Batcave. Um, we have one of our partners that is also in that role right now. Um, is a gentleman named Tapas Fikaza. Great dude, super smart, um, just really really good guy too. Um, so this person be working with, with with that individual to kind of lead this whole like Batcave effort because it's 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 pretty large, right? Um, so we're talking about you know having skills in in like um containerization kubernetes deployments like de declarative deployment states right um the whole kind of like service mesh um area of, you know we we've used istio in the past to kind of the, the monitoring logging observability stack right like somebody that has that really breadth of knowledge that has done it before is kind of what what we're looking for um at, at that that kind of more senior level role um, within Revacom too, because we're growing, we also have kind of like this DevOps like mentor lead role. We're lo really looking for somebody that can come in and focus internally on on our on our DevOps engineers, right? Um, and and helping them, help mentor them, you know, getting involved with some of their day to day things to to really kind of grow people. There's there's going to be a lot of growth needed in this space, right? So we want to invest back in the people. Um, to, to make sure that they have that guidance and they're just not left out there, kind of like floundering. And then we have anywhere from junior to senior level, like DevOps engineers that will actually be, you know, doing the implementation work anywhere from, you know, and it's very multidisciplinary, right? So anywhere from writing IAC, CAC um, to integrating tools, you know, like those SaaS, DAS tools that, that we were talking about, linters, you know, unit testers, integration testing tools, um, SBOM tools, you know, what, what have you, the, the kind of whole stack um to people that will set up pipelines right for for dev teams um to people that will help them with their manifests and deployments right to to various uh environments whether it be test staging that um, prod um at, at even different classification levels too um so both positions both at within platform one and within cms kind of bat cave is, is what we're looking for so those would be like the three or four different tiers of, of positions that we're looking for. Um, both are, are fairly immediate. I think we probably have like five or six that are immediate, like ready to go today. And then within the next three three months, there's probably going to be another ten or so that that open up. Right. And so, with that being said, when you're looking at people, uh, can you? Uh, I know you got thirty minutes, so I'm trying to run through it real quick. Uh, <laughs> Okay, so uh, when you're looking for people, do you have a idea of like um, one, like if you're a junior, are you looking one to three years, three to five, and then two, uh, are you heavy on certifications if they have certifications versus having the experience? And yeah. if it's remote. Yeah, yeah <laughs> so of all of our business is all remote at this point. <laughs> um, you know, we, we really don't, don't care where you live uh you obviously got to be in the united states i think that's the one caveat just because we're constrained by you know our customers um, U.S. Citizen. <laughs> yeah, uh, for the cms work you don't actually have to be a u.s citizen but cool. you have to have lived in the united states for like the past five years i think um but for dod work you have to be a u.s citizen um and so like the first thing i'll say about like there's there's requirements for the job right like one to three years or whatever the most important thing for us is culture right um you have to be a culture fit and and what we say all the time is like we can teach you how to be a devops engineer we can teach you how to write iac we can teach you how to interact with the tools we can't teach you how to be a good person and how to fit the culture so at revacom we place a really large emphasis on that culture 
role process in within hiring, right? So if you interview with us, you're going to get probably about an hour and a half of like cultural fit questions, right? And then if you make it past that, then you're going to get 45 minutes on technical, right? Um, and, and people are really confused by that. Like a lot of like hardcore engineers, like, why are you asking me about like what I'm interested in, right? Like, don't you just want to know if I can code or lay down this this pipeline? I'm like, no, because we got to work together. Communication is ultra important, right? The, the work that we do is hard, but the hardest thing that we do in our work is working with each other, right? So, you know, that's, we, we all got to make sure that we work with each other, we get along, we have the same passion and goals, right? That's really, really important. Um, and then after that, you know, there's, um, I don't, I mean, we have on paper from our customers, like you, like a junior engineer might be zero to two years of experience, right? We, we follow that as, we don't follow that as rules. We follow that as suggestions, right? Um, and, and a lot of people might squirm when I say that because, you know, we have engineers that have been doing it for a year and a half and, and this space is so new, right? Like we've been doing it for a year and a half, but yet they would, um, you know, align with somebody that might have been doing it for six or seven years. And so we'll, we'll pay them accordingly, right? And at, at the same token, there might be have somebody that has like 15 years of like Linux administration, but they come into the DevOps arena and, and it's really hard, right? So we might pay them, you know, to, to somebody that has like three years of experience. It just depends, right? It depends on like the cultural fit. It depends on the, the tech fit. I don't think we'll ever turn anybody away, but it's then our job to find out like, okay, wh where does this person fit in the grand scheme of things, right? And and the, the thing that, you know, kind of like Tamika said, like, you know, I, I talk a lot, I tell these people, like, you know, this is how we operate. They say, hey, you know, you're you're only offering me, say like $95,000 or whatever, right? Um, but similar roles are 110. And so I'm like, okay, cool. Like, you know, I, I get that. We, we just don't know yet, right? So I tell people like, I've had people in the first year that worked at Revacom that got four raises in their first year, right? I've also had people that got their first raise after four years, right? Not 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 to say that other person was doing bad. Um, they they were just learning a lot, and it took a while to get the value. Um, but after that fourth year, they got like two and a half raises or two raises and a bonus that fourth year, right? Um, so like when that light bulb goes off, like we will co compensate accordingly. And I've had people like. You know, on paper, it's like, okay, yeah, and they struggled through some of the, the technical things, but after the first two months, like, they got it, right, and, like, like the light bulb went off, um, they just started killing it, and then I gave them a raise, and they're like, okay, cool, and then two months later, I actually did this, I gave somebody another raise, and they're like, wait, what, you're giving me a raise? I'm like, yeah, dude, like, <laughs> you know, you, you deserve it, you're killing it. And they're like, whoa, I thought that was BS. Like, they really told me this. They said, I thought, you know, when you said you give out raises, like, more than once a year, I thought that was bullshit, but you actually are doing it. And I'm like, why would I lie about that, right? That's an expectation, like I'm big on expectation management. So that's, you know, that's an expectation that you have if you start killing it. So I better uphold that expectation or else you're gonna leave, right? All right. Um, so, you know, that, that's kind of, you know, how we operate. Um, I, I try to remove myself from the decision-making process, or I, I have re removed myself from the decision-making process on, on who comes in the door. That, that really is the responsibility of the team, right? So you'll interview with three people, they'll assess you, and it could be, you know, um, I believe in including everybody in the interview process. So I've had people that started last week that are interviewing somebody today, right? Um, because that person's got to work with them. And, and at this, on the same token, I have somebody that's been here seven years that will interview with that person that started, you know, last week to interview together and make that decision together. Um, so so that's kind of, you know, how we operate and, and they'll do the determination. They'll be telling me like, yeah, Brett, you know, I think I think this person, like we're trying to hire for an SE2 or, or a, a DSO2, DevSecOps Engineer 2. Like we think this person's a three or we think this person's a one. Like what what can we do and I'll, I'll have that conversation with that person we'll figure it out right and, and find something that's mutually agreeable upon and even you know structure tiers early of like hey if you do x y and z like we'll bump you up to this pay right um so we have we have people that span the gamut um to be honest and and i think people grow and and get promoted at times faster than they expect um and, and sometimes slower too right because it's it's based off of feedback that we get and and, and such uh, and the other question I think D had was, uh, are the positions remote? Yep. Yeah. So all, all remote. Yep. Um, we have employees now in, I 
think 20 states uh out of, out of our 80 87 people um 31 are actually in, not in hawaii but even of the other 50 something people that are in hawaii um only like six come into the office the rest like pretty much work fully remote so one one quick question that I, I i i never have asked you does the company pay for us to fly to hawaii for the company picnic so that, that's, a, that's a, a great question. Um, so I'm making sure I have nobody, no employees on on this, and this is going to be private, right? Like, so yeah, actually, can, you know, can, we, we can strip it out. It's it's, it's yeah, no problem. We, we, we had we had a really good year um, this past year, um, and you know, there's a lot of growth. Um, so actually, we're going to announce it next week, Tuesday, to our staff, but we're going to bring everybody out here in in, in January. Oh, that's um, awesome. I, I asked the real questions. These are the real questions. <laughs> no, I mean, I get that asked every day. Believe, believe me, like I, I fly to Baltimore, San Antonio, I meet with our staff. They're like, hey, when can I come to Hawaii? I'm like, I told them, like, ah, I don't know, but it, we've been planning it for a while. So, um, yeah, I, I think January, our goal, and last week in January, it's going to be our goal to get everybody out here. Got That's you. Cool. It's rainy season right now, right? This is rainy season for Hawaii, right? Y'all going into um, rainy season? Yeah, going, going in. Oh, actually, no, like usually like early spring is kind of rainy and then um, over the summer is like hurricane season. So it, there's a lot of tropical storms. Like now it's, it's beautiful today. It's hot okay. too, actually, in the 80s, which is kind of crazy for November. Yeah, I remember living in Oahu and I, it was raining for, for me, but I mean, it's not unbearable rain. Uh, Seattle is the same way and then you move back south you're like no I'm not going outside <laughs> that's unbearable all right so I want to make sure we got all the all the questions you, you Rebelcom I put down the the contact for um Brett inside the chat we can post that again um you, you know let me know if uh y'all need any other questions uh you can also find Brett on LinkedIn um, I mean, you, what what more do you want? We, we we you know we're bringing it to you. Everybody's uh, like, we are filling out all the information today. We want to work for Repcom. I mean, <laughs> because you know it's it's you and we've all been through it where you go for a company and they sell you on culture and it's going to be exciting and what we're going to do and all these great things that are on the checkout list and they want all this input from you and then you get there and you're just like miserable because they just want butts and seats and they promised you the moon and delivered like a bag of trash. And so to hear your energy and you actually deliver on what you are selling and culture being number one, because like you said, you can, you can train it, somebody on DevOps to be a great DevOps engineer because they're at your company, but people working together and enjoying each other and, and, and working remotely across the world that's priceless yeah it, it, it really is and thank you thank you for saying yeah, that yeah I, I i i definitely enjoy it i'm like i'm going to go look and see what's going on <laughs> yeah please um you know and and if you all know anybody to you know let them know um you know Tamika has my my contact information, but if any any of you want to talk to, glad to talk, glad to introduce you to to some of our team members too. If you want to ask them, you know everybody, I, I tell everybody like, hey, yeah, talk about the good stuff and the bad stuff, right? It, it's not always mm -hmm. you know rainbows and cupcakes over here. It, it's it's, it's hard. You said it's hard work. Um, but at the same time, you know, if we do do it with people we love, it makes it so much easier, right? Like I tell everybody, like, you know, we're gonna mess up, right? Like the the work we do is hard. Um, but if the relationships are not good, any little stumble is going to be catastrophic, right? If the relationships are great, like we can have a catastrophic event and, you know, the bond is so strong that we're going to get through it. Um, so we really try to try to focus on that and, and make sure that we, we, we take care of ourselves and those relationships. And if we do that, everything else is, is exponentially easier. Yeah, I agree 200%. All right, and um, everybody saying, is saying thank you for, for speaking. Thank you for sharing the info. We appreciate you, Brett. You, you know I'm going to hit you up. 
you, you know, most oh, definitely, I'm, you know, I'm gonna hit you up. You know, you know, I'm always hitting you up. You know, what's going on? Where we at? What we doing? Was what a job at, Brett? <laughs> no, thank you. Got a question. Uh oh, somebody had a question. Got a question. We have no. a question. Go ahead. When we apply, can we use you as reference, Brett? Yeah, yeah, sure. Um, you know, let let them know. You know that uh, you're you're at the um. You know, women in Linux uh, meeting, um, and okay. that you, you you spoke with me, and and um, you know we'll, we'll, we have a, a awesome team of of recruiter and recruiting and HR team that that's actually in house, um, so it's, they go through everything pretty pretty detailed. But yeah, okay. let, let them know. Thank you. And and then someone asked, what is the ratio of men to women on a team? Cool. Yeah. Great. Great question. So. As far as our company goes, I think we're like 55% uh, men, 45% women. Actually, go to our website. Uh, we list everybody that's on on in the company. Um, it's it's really important to us. You know, we've um, we've made a conscious effort to ensure that we have diversity. Right? It's it's really important. Diversity and equity is is important to us. Um, you know, I I will say though that on the engineering side, we we lack the, the the women, um, well, I, I shouldn't say we don't have any. We have a handful, and, and they're awesome. But if if we saw more, that'd be super, super great. Um, yeah, and that's our goal is 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 to train up uh, DevSecOps. Uh, we got some some blockchain tonight, but that's that's our goal is to get more people, especially women in DevSecOps, Linux administration, just foundational skills, understanding cloud security. What does that look like? How do you put that in a pipeline? How do you use Terraform? How do you how do you code? How do you use Rust? Um, what does that look like? That's and that's where we're at. Um, and Working we're just trying to get there. Working yeah, on it. Yeah. <laughs> that like you know, you know, five, five, ten year skills, not something you're gonna learn today and then like all oh, snap, uh, this is not gonna take me anywhere. Just trying to keep you employed. Like I tell people all the time, this is no cap, this is real. If I if I didn't learn if I if I don't know anything else but Linux, I'm still employable. <laughs> yep. This yeah, this, I, this, I one hundred percent true, and the thing the thing I want to add to is like that diversity is not only important to us, right? It's important to the customers we serve. Um, so you know, Center for Medicare and Medicaid Services Platform One, like they look for and appreciate that diversity too, right? Because that's how that's how we all become better, right? Different point of views, different different mindsets. Um, so you know, I've like I've convinced. And I didn't take a lot of work to convince them, right? Like, hey, if we hire people that maybe come from non-traditional skill sets, like, is it okay to put them on these contracts and work? And they said, yeah, by all means, like, this is foundational to what they're doing. So the more people um, that, uh, you know, get involved, the, the better off they're going to be as an organization, right? So, for example, I just, we just brought a guy, uh, his name is Javier, um, and I, I think he's like in Indiana or something like that. Uh, as an intern, um, we said, "Hey, Platform One, like we got this this young guy. He's su super good dude. We think he has a lot of potential. We'll pay for him to work at Platform One, right? Kind of the opposite way around. Like right. usually they pay us, but we're paying him to just go over there and, and be a contributor and learn." And I said, "Are you willing to to take him? Because we want to invest in in this kid." And he said. They said, yep, let, let's do it. And we got into a little bit of trouble for that, but we worked it out because people can't be working for free, but we, we sorted it out and, um, and and he's loving every day and he's learning so much, right? And, and we're investing in him because as we grow, um, having those foundational skill sets is, is really important and there's no better way to learn it than on the actual stuff that is leading you know, the, the pathway. Um, so very much similar cultures and same buy-in from our customers who are actually our partners, right, in, in delivering these capabilities. Well, appreciate you. Our, and uh, everybody's saying they're going to hit you up on LinkedIn. Uh, I think uh, Elizabeth is most definitely going to hit you up on LinkedIn. <laughs> <laughs> and I appreciate you, Brett. And I'm going to be in contact with you after this because I'm sure some people are going to hit me up with some questions. Oh, yeah, she said she already did. I'm sure some people are going to hit me up with some questions and so forth and so on. And, and we'll go from there. Oh, is, uh, oh, Lorraine said, are VAX mandates required at your company? Yeah, so so that's a, that's a great question, um, Lauren. Um, 
the, the short answer is probably, you know, we're still working through it, but we service like, for example, Center for Medicare and Medicaid Services, right? So anybody working on those contracts, um, it, it is a requirement, uh, unfortunately. Um, it, it's really weird, right? Like they're giving the companies the ability to create, create exemptions on our own. Um, so we're kind of working through what that looks like, right? Um, but but the, the easy answer is yes. The, the harder answer is like, well, it, it kind of depends. And there's going to be some type of company policy that we come out with that that addresses that concern. And, you know, just really transparent, like we haven't figured that out yet. It's, it's a difficult topic. Yeah. Everybody's gotcha. still kind of waiting through that. My sister works for the state of California and her boss straight up told her, she was like, uh, so we're not coming back to the office indefinitely. Your production numbers are up. We see no need. We see no need for you guys to come back in here. You guys are killing it. And um, she's vaccinated, but she's she's just like, they don't need to know if I'm vaccinated or not. Well, they're going to know everything. Yeah, gonna know everything is, huh? <laughs> yeah so the, the other interesting twist, right, is once you're over 100, uh, no matter what you do and, and where you work, it's a requirement that everybody be vaccinated or get weekly tests, right? So um, we're at, like I said, 87. We're going to pass that threshold here in the next month, month and a half. So once that happens, uh, the requirement might not be to be vaccinated, but the law will be that anybody um, that works at a company over 100 has to undergo either vaccination or weekly testing. So that's something we're figuring out too because we're, we're going to be at that threshold here shortly. And I know we have one more question uh, here. Joe, just bear with me one second. Uh, uh, someone had asked about, TC had asked about uh, technical writing um, earlier. Let me, I'm trying to scroll back up to grab that question. Uh, and if you want to come on off of off of mute, uh, TC, that's, that's good too, because I'm scrolling here all the way. I don't see it, but I know you got a question here at the bottom. Um, it was, uh, so there's not much of a barrier to entry with your internship program? Um, yeah, so so a couple things. Uh, technical writing, we actually have three positions open for technical writing. So if you understand DevOps and like, um, and like containerization and, and this whole space and you're a technical writer, like we we need you desperately. Um, teams need you, the, 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 the customers need you. Um, so that's, please let us know. We have an awesome technical writing team too. Um, but as far as our barrier to entry, like, you know, attitude and aptitude is, is what we talk about, right? You hear everybody say it. Um, you got to have the attitude and depending on your aptitude, it, it will, um, it will, your attitude will play a larger role in, in our risk tolerance for taking on somebody with, with less skill, right? Um, so it, it's, there's no like set defined, like thou must shall have, or thou must have this, right. But, um, it really comes down to your attitude too. Um, I've seen our teams take people that are super, super green if they had the right attitude. And, and even though they're decent culture fits, um, you know, sometimes less if they had more experience. So it just really depends on like the team need, how much time they have, what your attitude is like. Right. Um, but I would say like, you know, don't, don't be afraid whether it's with us or somebody else. Like if you never try to open that door, you'll never know if it's open or not. Right. Um, so the, the first thing is just to knock and, and see if somebody answers, right? Like no is no better off than where you're at today. Um, <laughs> I get so. that. I'm with that. Yeah. All right. Thank you, Brett. Um, Thank you all. Revacom, uh, D, can you, do you have his LinkedIn? You could drop it for, for people that might have missed I it. I will. I will definitely drop it again and get the direct link to the company website. Yep. And uh, all the positions posted to Brett or are, you, are yep. they still need? Okay. All the positions all posted. The cool. Post all right. So there's Brett dropped it, the link to his website. Uh, go check it out. Also, link with him on LinkedIn. Um, if you're looking for work, DevSecOps. Uh, it sounds like you needed some internal trainers as well, too. Lynn, that's a shout out to you. Um, and as well as jobs on our Slack channel directly. Yeah. <laughs> Lynn perking up. Yeah. yeah. So that sounded like something for you, too, right? So again, 
uh, check out Brett at Rebelcom. Uh, Brett, what's your, uh, how do you say your list? Kimura, Kimura? Kimura. Kimura. Okay. 